Hi everybody! Today we're going to be working through some of the stoichiometry review problems that were posted on Google Classroom for this week, week four of digital learning. Um, so I'm going to work through a few of the problems and um, if you need more help, if you want more, you know, individualized practice, please let me know and I will create some more tutorial videos. We're also going to be having a live chat this week to discuss whatever questions you guys have before you plan on taking your quiz at the end of the week. Um, so the first problem we're going to go through is number one on the stoichiometry review sheet. Um, it, this is the equation. It is already balanced for you. It was given to you in the problem, um, already balanced. So we're going to take a look at the problem and then solve. Um, part A of this problem says 80 grams of iodine oxide, which is I2O5, the first reactant listed, uh, reacts with 28 grams of carbon monoxide, CO. Determine the mass of iodine which could be produced. Now, I just want to remind you guys um, of the roadmap that we've been working with in this unit, mass of substance A to moles of substance A to moles of substance B to mass of substance B. Okay, here's our roadmap. That's also in your notes. We've talked about it quite a few times in this unit. Um, and so what we need to do first is decide what we are doing, where we're starting on the roadmap and where we're ending. And then from there, we can figure out a plan to solve this problem. Um, so the first part of this problem asks us for the mass of iodine that could be produced. So we know we're finding a mass. We know that we are ending in mass of substance B. So we're going all the way to the end of the roadmap here. And uh, given to us in the problem are two mass values. So that means that we're starting at mass of substance A. So this problem is going to take us all the way through the roadmap from mass of substance A all the way to mass of substance B. Um, so then now that we know sort of where we're going, let's take a look and see what we need to know in order to solve this problem. So the first step in all of these problems is to balance the equation, and this equation is already balanced for you. So step one is already done. Um, so let's take a look at what we know. We know that we have 80 grams of iodine oxide, and we also know that we have 28 grams of carbon monoxide. So we're going to take both of those values and we're going to put them over one because we're going to use both of these values to solve our problem. Now what we're trying to find is the, the mass of iodine that could possibly be produced. Um, so in order to determine that we need to figure out which of these two given values is going to give us less product and that tells us that that reactant is the limiting reactant and that's going to control how much of our product can be formed. So when you're starting with mass, which we are here, the first step is to go from mass of substance A to moles of substance A. And in order to do that, we're going to be using the molar mass of substance A, which we are going to find on the periodic table. So if you don't have a periodic table with you, pause this video, go get your periodic table so you can follow along as we go through this. Um, so the first thing we want to do is find the molar mass of substance A, which in this case, we are doing this twice. So that means that we have substance A twice. We have to do the calculation twice. Um, so the first one we're going to start with is iodine oxide, the first one that was given, 80 grams of iodine oxide. Now, of course, there are multiple ways you can solve this problem. And if you go back to some of my earlier videos, you will see there are two different ways to solve for the limiting reactant. I'm showing you what I think is the easier way of the two, um, but it does also require a little bit more calculation on your end. So if you prefer the other way, go back and review that video and see what you would have to do to solve the problem that way. So what we're going to do first is calculate the mass of iodine oxide, I2O5. So if you look at your periodic tables, um, you will see that the mass of iodine is 
0.9 grams per mole, and we've got two of those, so we're going to multiply them by two. And I'm working this out on a separate piece of paper um, just to save some space on my whiteboard. And then to that, we're going to add the mass of five oxygen. So oxygen is 16 grams per mole times the five that we have in this um, in this compound. So 126.9 times two plus 16 times five gives us 333.8 grams per mole. So that's the first thing we're going to do in our problem here is convert grams of iodine into moles of iodine. And I'm just going to write this down on my whiteboard and then I'll show you guys how to set it up. Okay, so my first step here, since I started with grams in the first uh, step of the calculation, I want that molar mass to go on the bottom of that second uh, calculation step um, because then my units are going to cancel out. Grams on the top here cancels out with grams on the bottom and we have converted that to moles. Now we are at moles of substance A right here on our roadmap. So the next thing we want to do is go to moles of substance B. And in order to do that, we're going to use the mole ratio. And that comes from our balanced chemical equation. Okay, so we're going to look back to the balanced chemical equation and see how many moles of I2O5 were present. And if you look at your balanced equation, there's one mole of I2O5 for every one mole of I2, which is what we're looking for. We're trying to find how much I2 is formed. Okay, so you would set up your mole ratio based on your balanced equation. Those ones come from the coefficients in our balanced equation. And then our last step, if we're following the roadmap, is to go from uh, moles of substance B to mass of substance B. And in order to do that, we're going to use another molar mass which again, we're gonna find from uh, the periodic table. This time, substance B is iodine, I2. So we're gonna take that mass of iodine, 126.9, and we're gonna multiply that by two. So the mass of two iodines is 253.8 grams per mole. So that's what we're gonna use in our last calculation step. Now, one mole of I2 is going to be placed on the bottom of our last fraction, and that's because we want those units to cancel out. We want moles to cancel out with moles. So that means we want to be left with grams, and that's what the problem is asking us for. What um, mass of iodine could be produced? So that means we have to go all the way to grams, um, and again, our mass was 253.8 grams. Okay, so we have our problem set up. Now it's just a matter of calculating. We're going to multiply anything on the top of our fractions, and we're going to divide by anything on the bottom. So I'm going to work this out in my calculator. 80 times 1, which is 80, times 1, times 253.8, divided by 333.8, divided by 1, divided by 1. The answer is 60.8. We're going to stick with three sig figs, 60.8 grams of iodine. So that's telling us that if we use all of the 80 grams of our reactant, we can produce um, a maximum of 60.8 grams of iodine. Okay. Now, that's saying that our other reactant is limitless. So we have more than enough carbon monoxide in order to use up all of the iodine oxide that's given to us. Um, but we don't know if that's the case. What we do know is that we have 28 grams of carbon monoxide. And so what we're going to do is determine based on that mass of carbon monoxide how much iodine we could produce. Then we're going to compare those two answers. So we're going to set up our first step again using our roadmap, mass of substance A to moles of substance A using the molar mass. Carbon monoxide has a molar mass of uh, 28.01 grams per mole. And that comes from your periodic table. Carbon is 12.01, oxygen is 16. So our first step is going to look like this. 28 grams over 1 times 1 mole of carbon monoxide over 28.01 grams. 
Okay, that's just a coincidence that they're the same number. Then our next step is going to be a mole ratio step. So we're going to go back to our balanced equation in order to figure this one out. Um, we have moles of carbon monoxide on the top. So we want to bring moles of carbon monoxide down to the bottom so that our units cancel out. And in our balanced equation, we have five of them, five moles of CO. Um, in the product, we have one mole of iodine. So for every five moles of carbon monoxide, we produce one mole of iodine. And then our last step is going to look exactly the same as it did in our previous problem because we're converting to mass of iodine. So it's the same last step for both of these problems. So now that it's set up, I'm going to solve 28 times 1 times 1 times 253.8 um, divided by 28.01 divided by 5 divided by 1. 50.7 is the mass of iodine that we could produce using all of the carbon monoxide that's present. So what this tells us is that the carbon monoxide produces less iodine than the iodine oxide could produce, which means the carbon monoxide is our limiting reactant and that determines the maximum amount of product that can form. So this is not going to affect our calculation. This bottom one is going to affect our calculation. That tells us we have iodine oxide left over at the end of this reaction. And we're going to use all the carbon monoxide that's present to produce as much iodine as we possibly can. Um, the maximum amount that we could produce is 50.7 grams. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. Um, part B says in the above situation, only 0.16 moles of iodine was produced. So that's telling us 1.16 moles of iodine is produced. And then the question that it's asking is what mass of iodine is produced? Okay, so we have moles of iodine. We want to find mass of iodine. That's just a simple calculation going from grams to moles. Don't think too much into these problems, guys. Look at what it's asking. Look at what you're asked to find. There's no, um, there's no changing of substance A to B in this case. So we're going to start with 0.16 moles of iodine. Put that over 1. You already have the molar mass of iodine. You used it twice already. So we're going to take that number that we used in the last two calculations, 253.8 grams over 1 mole. Now we want to put moles on the bottom because we started with moles. So we want those units to cancel out. And the 253.8 comes from the periodic table. That's the mass of two iodines um, because it's I2. So when we solve 0.16 times 253.8, we end up with an answer of 40.6 grams of iodine. Okay, now that tells us that that was the amount that was actually produced in this calculation. So the actual yield is 0.16 moles or 40.6 grams of iodine. Um, the second part of this problem asks what percentage, what, what percentage yield of iodine was produced. So remember, percent yield equals actual over theoretical times 100. Okay, actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. Now in this problem, our actual yield is 40.6 grams. Our theoretical yield was what we calculated in part A of this problem, 50.7 grams of iodine. So we're going to divide 40.6 by 50.7 multiply by 100, and that gives us 80.1%. That's pretty darn good. 80.1%. Okay, now on a percent yield, 
that's the only unit you need is the percent sign. All right, so that was problem number one on the review. I will go over another problem and post that video as well. Please let me know if you have any questions.